Hey there! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to apply bump maps and other texture maps created in mid-journey to your keyshot scene. At first let's go to the mid-journey website and figure out what prompts to use in order to generate our bump maps in mid-journey. So I will just go to the mid-journey explore page and we'll search for bump texture and then we get already really interesting images, right? Carbon lines, textures, monster skin, flat, plastic grips texture, fire texture pattern. So all these words are words that we can use to create our pattern. For us, it's not really important if it's with color or not, but bump maps in itself, they rely on black and white images or the values from an image. Even if you put in a colored image, it will distill the black and white from it anyway. Simple plastic texture. So it's really not like a crazy wording that we need to apply. But one little trick that I would like to show to you is the tile function. So we uh, imagine black plastic texture. And then we do double dash tile in order to create an image that is tileable. I have to say that, or caution at least, that Midjourney does not create perfect tiles, but at least they work much better than images that you don't use with the function tile and you can blend them much nicer together. So I think this is a really nice trick to get quick and simple textures and patterns to play around with and test on your geometries. Here we are in Keyshot. I just, for this example, I used this bottle that I modeled a while ago. And I will show you how to apply the bump map and what cool stuff we can do with it. All right, so let's go into this material. We open the material graph and drop in the images that we just generated. So this one was the one without tile and this one was the tiled one. So let me just show you. So you can really create an interesting effect. And if you press C in the material graph, the selected one will show as an isolated image. So we see like the really clear lines and distinctions that might also be due to the mapping type. But even if we select the cylinder and adjust its position, something like this. So now it's already much better. Let me pull it down a little bit so we get rid of the separation line at the bottom. So now there is only one break of the pattern at the back. So if I go out of the C mode again, we see we get this really clear cut lines that we don't want necessarily. Obviously we can choose a different perspective to make sure we don't have it in our vision. But what if we want to scale it down, let's say by roughly a half, then we immediately get repetition in a much different way. Or maybe I should also show you in a non-transparent version. Also because the image has this gradual fade, right? The values decrease or increase towards the corner. So we get these really sharp transitions. And another trip that I can show you is the mapping 2D, if, especially if you want to explore many different images at once, it can be useful to set this one up at, yeah, for once, and then you don't have to set it up for every new pattern or texture that you are testing out.
All right, and then you can go ahead and select the node for the different textures. And then they will all automatically be cylindrical. You can still adjust the size individually if you wish. So that's not a problem. But now let's try the tiled one to show you the difference here. You have to go down with the, the scale quite a bit. But as you can see here, there is no obvious transition at least. If you look really closely, you might still find points where it doesn't perfectly align. But overall, it gives you a much better transition from one repetition to the other. I also want to show you what the difference is between a normal map and a bump map. So if you go to normal map online, there you can just drag and drop an image and it will create normal map for you. You can also download displacement map, ambient occlusion, specular maps and use them for your material. So this is a really handy tool. It's free. You can always donate obviously, but it will also give you a preview of how the geometry looks like. You can make some adjustments, but usually the default setting is all I need. So you can go ahead and download it. And if you drop that one in and place it as bump, so maybe here you notice that you can at the bump tab, you will see a checkbox for normal map. Normal map is usually purple and the normal map with its color values includes the information about the directions of the normals of a surface. So even though it's a 2D representation, it has more information in terms of surface geometry than texture map, but it does not create three dimensional geometry still, right? It's still just an effect. But if you use that one, it's already automatically checked because it recognizes it as a normal map. And we do the node based mapping. We scale it down to something appropriate and position it properly. So that's the normal map. And this is the bump map. The normal map has a much stronger impact and effect. It also considers the shading, right? So where we have darkness and where we have lightness, that will impact how the normal map is being read. So the values here are different from in that upper corner, which is why we have much more extreme and in part better results for our bump with this solution. But it does not save us from the error that we get with this image that is not tiled, right? We get the same problem with repeatability. All right, so let's test different textures now that I generated just to find one that works. And we, we don't have to stay in, in that mode, right? I just uh, wanted to make it more obvious to you what it does, the effect it has. But if it's a glass bottle, you still see the effect applies in the same way. So I will just show you a few different patterns. We can make our selection continue with our work. So here, don't forget to go to node and then put it in the bump. And you get something pretty nice. Very organic. And imagine if this is something you are going for and you have to model that in 3D, it's really difficult. Not just because it's very irregular, but also because the shapes are so natural or organic compared to the geometric modeling that you usually have in 3D software. So it really gives you a quick way to evaluate certain patterns or textures in order to make a decision if you would want to go further with a direction like that, that you then can translate into 3D rather than doing that for all your ideas that you have. Okay, let's try another one. So what I'm looking for here right now is a texture that conveys the 
message of the bottle. What is this bottle for? It's like uh, for cyclists maybe. They are in the outdoors. So can we find a bottle that indicates also that feeling or that works well in that terrain that suggests additional value in some sense? So I think this already looks really like ice. So this is something that maybe we can keep in mind for later on when we want to add an additional layer of effects onto the geometry. But for now, let's keep on looking for different alternatives. This one here, I think has some interesting solutions because this looks maybe like tracks or like flows. So it relates somehow to the outdoors just by the by its very own nature already here too we have like these elevation lines of a map maybe it is more like a, a crack a crack effect and that's usually not something you want to have everywhere, right? Let me show you something. We just go ahead now and copy the material, the plastic transparent. And now we apply the bump to that material and apply that as a label. And we can remove the bump from the original material. And you see what we get is exactly what we had before. The benefit now is though that we can use other textures to manipulate the visibility of this bump specifically. So if we use the color gradient, for example, let me just see where we have it. Let's rotate it, translate it. Okay. Let's say we only want it at the top and not at the bottom visible, this bump that we have, right? Now with the color gradient, I can just put it in the opacity channel of the label. Now you can really just with the color gradient as opacity map, get this effect on very specific regions of your geometry rather than everywhere on the entire bottle. And this is only possible because we have it as a label, because if we apply that opacity channel, into our original material, it just vanishes completely, right? So we lose geometry where it doesn't make sense to lose it. So that's why I use it as a label, but with the exact same material so that they blend together well. We can also still, let me remove the opacity channel, keep this, let's say, as the black plastic that it was before. And now the label still covers up that material and is applied where our opacity channel is bright and there it will be more dominant than the original material so if you want partial translucency that's also a way to do that but i like it to be fully transparent in this example So I think this one is less aggressive. So the, the difference in the values is not as high, which makes it a little bit more readable, but also subtle. So you don't overpower the entire bottle. So I think we're getting somewhere really cool. But if you want to go even further, we can go ahead and try to put this bottle into an environment where it also makes sense, show some of the context. So let's go into the material graph of the backdrop. So here it's just a regular plastic material. You might want to take one of these patterns. And this time we apply it planar maybe. So now give it a position that you think might be interesting to convey some sort of landscape. And now we go to geometry displays 
put it into the display channel and that one into the geometry and what we will see is now that we don't just apply it as a bump but we actually change the geometry if you double click on the displace node you have different settings 100 millimeters seems quite extreme let's go for two centimeters offset is if you want to switch the zero point in a certain direction depending on your image this might be relevant do you want uh, the 50 percent great gray value to be the middle point of which the displacement starts from or do you want it to be white or fully black that's something you can adjust with the offset value and max triangles is in millions says how many triangles will maximally be used so if you then go to execute geometry you will see that we have some sort of effect appearing right let me select a camera that is showing this better so we get sort of a beach vibe maybe we have this texture on our background on our backdrop really fine so this like a beach vibe maybe but maybe we want it to be more rocky So this is our landscape. Maybe it's better to use box indeed for this example. So we have it everywhere. And if we execute again and go back. So we already have some like a some sort of elevation or indicate at least that there might be some elevation happening we don't want to go too extreme but maybe these are some of the effects that you want to achieve now we see that this is extremely jagged the edges are not working at all so what you can do here is decrease the triangle size so i go for 0 0.01 but be aware that this can drastically increase also the computation power that is required and maybe freeze or even crash but i will also increase the max triangle number and let's try that again and now we have something that is not much better honestly <laughs> maybe we reduce that now a little bit seems extreme and we leave that as it is for now so try to play around with these values until you get something that you think is interesting but don't be too aggressive especially if the screenshot or if the image that you render out is about the bottle right and not about the environment so at the end we will apply a depth of field so we won't even be noticing all these jagged edges that much but we will notice the values and that there is some elevation happening um, but you get the idea right so we can create this fake elevation environment and have some interesting things going on in the background without modeling anything but let's go back into this camera and now i want to show you the last trick which is combining those points into a single material right so we have this texture and we have this opacity map and if you also want to displace it as geometry we get this really cool ice effect if you will but we still want to do both of them together and it's not possible to put multiple in here but what we can do instead is use the color composite so we put the pattern as the source we put the pattern as the source and the color gradient as the background and now if you isolate the view you only see the source but you go to blend mode and apply multiply and then you get them together and that is exactly what we need for the displacement map and here now let's see how far should the displacement be we don't want to be that aggressive maybe three millimeters and to 0 0.1 and we leave this for now at 6 
and we haven't plugged it in yet so let's plug it in and let's apply the geometry node and i think we get this really cool ice effect even these details in the texture they really give you this feeling that there is some natural ice occurring right we have these jagged edge of the displacement that are actually to our benefit in this example and together with the liquid and the background i can really imagine that this bottle is being used in some black sand beach in iceland or something but once more the benefit of this technique is really to be able to test a lot of different textures and patterns after each other without the requirement to model each of them individually especially very organic patterns so now with this solution applied i can take it as the baseline for our concept and develop the texture in a way that is workable in 3d so we can actually mold it apply draft where we need to make it work better with the other shape elements that the bottle has already integrated so all these things that have to be considered now can be considered but we already have a glimpse of what the concept could look like and which one of the textures works better and also the scale of which they work so all these things you can really quickly assess with this technique right so let me now just um, do some of the other stuff so just to be sure we have for photographic mode with low contrast let's do product you can do caustics if you want to but i think the scene is already heavy enough we don't want necessarily to do that for the environment and let's start with the camera first so in order to do depth of field you just go down to the checkbox then you click the focal point and you click on your bottle now you set the focal point so you're done but maybe it's too blurry and in order to make sure you see what is supposed to be blurry and what is supposed to be sharp you can also use the geometry view so we have three blue planes the middle one is where it's sharp and the other ones is where it starts to begin to become blurry so if we increase the number the distance between those planes increases and also the space that is remaining sharp increases so now we are all the front is sharp but the back of the bottle is really not sharp we can also go really extreme and also make some of the background more visible so play around with this value and now you might want to make some further adjustments i think in this example i would like some more highlight on the lid so i create the pin make it rectangular, rectangular, make sure that it's double the size in y direction than it is in x direction to have this really long version, go to exponential and fall off mode. Then we increase the brightness to five and then we try to find a good spot where we can set the highlight. I think somewhere here might be interesting. And now we have seen and we have this ice effect we tested a lot of different textures and we know how to move on with this concept